Pat Martino is widely regarded as one of the greats in modern jazz guitar playing. Along with his impeccable timing and articulation, he's also known for these long eighth note lines that he plays through chord changes, like this lick I found on the tune Close Your Eyes from a recording in the late 60s. <laughs> There's some really amazing material here, but it can be a little overwhelming to pull so much information from so many notes and so many positions on the fretboard. Maybe you've transcribed a lick like this, or maybe an entire solo, and you learned it and you can play it up to speed with the recording, but what do you do next? How do you make that language part of your own vocabulary? It starts by breaking down the material and looking for ways to interpret what you're hearing. You want some way to be able to tell yourself, when I hear this chord, I can play something like this. So let's look at this Pat Martino lick and see what we can learn from it, and then we'll talk about some concrete ways to use this information. The lick starts with a passage made up almost entirely of F Dorian over the F minor chord. We get to the G half diminished by using an enclosure around D flat, the flat five of the G half diminished chord. We then play a D flat major seven arpeggio. On the C7, we see some mostly F minor material with some chromaticism that gives us a dominant seven sharp five sound. The second G half diminished also uses a D flat major seven arpeggio, and the second C7 also uses the sharp five sound with a C augmented triad. We finish the lick with some more F Dorian material using some common bebop chromaticism. So this is all well and good, but let's talk about some ways to really use these sounds. For instance, if you see a half diminished chord, you can play a major seven arpeggio on the flat five of that chord. It emphasizes the flat five, flat seven, flat nine, and 11 of the chord, which doesn't necessarily outline the chord very well, but as you can hear when Pat plays it, it sounds great. When it comes to the F minor material over C7, think about it this way. We're basically playing over the one chord during the five chord. It really makes a statement about the key center that we're playing in, but it also gives you some interesting alterations like the flat nine, the sharp nine, and the sharp five. And for what it's worth, F harmonic minor sounds great over the entire minor two, five, one. The C augmented triad is a little more obvious. It's gonna give you the one, three, and sharp five. So you'll get some strong chord tones, but also a good altered sound. When it comes to the F minor material at the beginning and end of the lick, I think it's probably best to look at this as F Dorian with some chromaticism thrown in. For instance, if you really wanted to, you could look at this small passage as a D augmented chord. But functionally, that's not really what's happening here. And if you try to replicate that, unless you play this exact pattern, you're not gonna get a similar sound. So for now, I think it's best to say, if you wanna use this kind of F minor sound, then these are the kind of chromatic notes that you're gonna use. But that's not all we can get out of this lick. Depending on how you hear things and your understanding of music theory, there are a lot of other places we can put this material. For instance, we can use all of the material in this section on a D flat major seven chord, or a B flat minor seven chord, or an E flat dominant seven chord. We can also split up this section and use it as two separate 2-5-1 licks in the key of A-flat. Or we could use those same two licks as minor 2-5-1s in F minor. And the F minor material in this section works great as a 2-5-1 in E flat. This is a great lick, and this is all really great material, and you should take the time to learn it and use it. But there's a bigger picture here. You can extract this kind of information and this amount of information from any of the solos and licks that you're learning. It can take a little bit of music theory knowledge and some critical thinking, but it's certainly worth it in the long run.
And it matters a lot that this language can be used in a lot of different places. If you listen to Pat Martino, you'll hear a lot of the same licks and phrases used over a lot of different chords. It's not because he'd run out of things to play, but it's because that's his language. And when you hear Pat Martino, you know it's Pat Martino. Obviously, that's not the only way you're going to want to improvise as a jazz guitarist, but if you're interested in playing bebop, then learning the language is really important. So let's recap everything we got out of this lick. We've got two minor 251 licks, three major 251 licks, and some really great material that you can play over a bunch of different chords. And so if you want a handy PDF with all of these licks, as well as playalongs for major and minor 251s in all 12 keys, then you should head to patreon.com slash Eli Gilbert guitar. That's where I put all the extra content that you can't get here on YouTube. And that means more playalongs, more licks, and more lessons. And if you enjoyed this lesson and you want to learn more about jazz guitar, then you should subscribe to this channel and let me know in a comment below what else you'd like to hear about in a video like this. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.